This is a 2014 map. As usual, there are a series of geological structures you need to interpret. There is a pluton, which we can see down in the bottom of the map down here, as indicated by the um, large outcrop pattern, as well as the metamorphic aureole. Um, a dike, that's a sheet-like morphology, trending northeast, northwest to southeast. Um, a series of unconformities this time instead of one. Um, the first one that we can see over on the eastern part of the map is uh, rock unit G, which is horizontal and cuts across a pluton, its aureole, and the folded layers underneath. The same unconformity can be found on the western side of the map. And it's cutting across, it's got a change in uh, dip with the underlying layer, which is rock unit H. Interestingly, um, rock unit H is also sitting unconformably above a series of folded layers. We can see that even though the strike of the, uh, the rock is north-south, it's cutting across these folded layers which are at a higher um, angle, higher dip angle. So it's one of the few times that we've seen more than one unconformity on the same map. So this is the older unconformity, the first, and this is the second. Now to the east and to the west of F2, there is a series of repeti uh, repeated layers. Um, in this area, part of the map, we've got rock unit D that isn't repeated um, with C on either side there. Um, and if we look at the dip arrows, um, we've got one dip coming to uh, dipping towards the east and another dip over here dipping towards the west, suggesting that in the centre here, there is an APT now if you look at the dip directions, they're towards each other, suggesting it's got to be a sinful. If I go further to the east, rock unit E isn't repeated, but rock unit C is on either side, suggesting there's a fold um, axis in here. Um, and if I look further up, I've got diverging dip directions, so the APT of this particular fold, again, is running north-south. I have an antiform there. Go to the west of F2. Um, I can see two layers of rocks which are repeated again. In fact, um, it's rock unit C and rock unit D just hiding in this area. The only one that's not repeated is rock unit E, suggesting that again there is another fault um, and an APT which is running north south that just gets stopped by the unconformity. And because we've got dip, um, diverging dip directions, suggesting that we've got another antiform in that area. As you can see, I've transferred the information from a long line section XY onto my scrap bit of paper. I've noted down changes in dip directions um, between fold axes, as well as the position of unconformities along the section and other igneous bodies. You may see that I haven't included this particular fold axis just yet or the layers which are situated under the, under the unconformity towards the west or the east i.e. the pluton, the metamorphic aureole. Um, I'm going to make a decision to add those to my scrap bit of paper when I'm going to draw the cross section that way I'm going to be less confused. Right so what order I'm going to draw this cross section? Well, I need to start from the youngest and work my way backwards in time. Looking at the map, I can see that the both unconformities are older than the intrusions, um, the dike, and the folded layers themselves. So, out of those two uh, layers which sit, sit above the unconformities, um, G is first because it's horizontal, it has the less tilt, more in fact it has no tilt. 
so that is above unconformity 2. Um, then I'm going to put in rock unit H, which is this layer here, um, that sits directly um, below rock unit G over the east side of the cross section. And that sits above unconformity 1. I can see then that um, it's going to be one of the intrusions that I need to include next because rock unit B over here sits directly underneath the unconformity of rock unit G. Um, but if I look further to the south, the dike cuts across a pluton suggesting that is younger. Therefore, I need to add this first before I add the pluton. So I'm going to put the dike in, which is rock unit A. Um, and then I'm going to add F2. And the uh, uh, rock unit B. Once I've done that, I can add the folded layers and the aureole to the, met um, to the pluton itself. That's just because it makes it easier to um, mark it on and it's cutting because it cuts across all the other layers, even though it's a, a younger feature compared to the folding. Okay, I'm ready now to produce my cross section. Um, I'm going to transfer the information down in the order I've worked out earlier. The first layer they're going to add in is rock unit G and the underlying unconformity. It's um, both layers on either side are horizontal. So I'm going to uh, mark the position on, on, on the surface and then draw a horizontal line between um, the two hillsides. If I've drawn it accurately, knock things off, um, the line will be horizontal. As soon as I've um, marked them off, and note down what layer is above it, and we put the first layer in. The second layer that I'm going to mark on is the first, the older unconformity, which is dipping 10 degrees towards um, X. We know from the map um, that it will get stopped by the upper unconformity, um, which is underneath rock unit G. So 10 degrees towards X. Low angle. But it must have suffered a period of tilting to produce the tilt. Folding, sorry, to produce the tilt. There, that's going to go across section rock unit H above. So we can lock this in. Now, I've got two options really with this. Um, I can um, either mark in um, F2, but I know F2 is older than the dike because the dike cuts across it. Uh, and the dike is stopped by the first, the older unconformity. If I continue it down this section down here, I know that uh, the dike is younger than the pluton, uh, and the pluton is um, older than um, the latter, um, later uh, unconformity, which is sitting directly underneath rock unit G. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to put in the dike first, which I know from the map is a straight line, therefore it's vertical. Then I'm going to put in F2, and then I'm going to do the pluton over on this side of the map. So let's mark off the dike first. Make sure my piece of paper is level. Dike sits in there. It's got to be vertical. It's discordant, it gets stopped by the unconformities, well, on the first unconformity anyway. As soon as I put that one in, I'm going to mark it down as rock unit A. Um, so the next layer is F2. There's the boundary there. I'm going to extend it up, but it gets stopped by the unconformity. Um, once I've done that one, I need to mark in rock unit B, which is the pluton. 
Now, to do that, I need to predict where the boundary will be. So the Pluton's over this section, north part of the map, and down here. If I predict where those two boundaries would um, join up, it's somewhere on here on the cross section. And the metamorphic coral, which is associated with it, is that same width away. So I'm going to use a different coloured pen to mark where it would hit the base of the unconformity. So it just makes it easier to recognise where those things are. Okay, so now we're not going to draw it to the surface. So at the base of rock unit G, that's where I would have the pluton. It's tilted towards X at a high angle. I'm just going to put a little mark on there for where the metamorphic aureole is. But I'm not going to draw it in yet um, because I need to put the folded layers in first. So this is rock unit B. The aureole will be the same distance all the way down. Okay, so um, all I need to do now is put in the folded layers as well as the aureole. Now looking at the cross section, I've got two areas, this one over here as well as this one. I think this area would be easier to do first, followed by um, the western side of F2. Now, looking to the east of F2 on the map, I know I've got a syniform followed by an antiform. So I know I've got two folds and the other information that I've gleaned from it is because I've got unequal dips, it means I'm going to have an inclined axis. Let's mark those on. So C occurs there, again here, as well as up there. It reappears that section of the map. So I'm just going to put the letters on straight away. It's going to help me know which boundaries to join up together. So C, E, C, D, C. Um, I'm going to have a fold axis in between. Um, this layer here and also um, layer um, E at the top. So this boundary is 30 degrees towards Y. Let's start on this side. I know it gets stopped by the unconformity. It's also stopped by the pluton. Um, the next one on here is um, the other side of the fold axis and it's 70 degrees towards X. Um, I'm going to extend this down about 2-3 centimetres because I know it's got to come down and back up again. Um, better to make your line a little bit short initially and you can always extend it once you know how far it's going to go. Um, so the next layer is also 70 degrees towards X. Now this one I'm not going to extend down so far because I know it goes joins this boundary over here. So that will do for the moment. Um, and this one over here is on the other side and it's tilted towards Y at 30 degrees. stopped by F2. So I can join those two up there. Now to finish off the fold I need to bend this boundary around and go back up here. I'm going to try and keep C the same thickness. So to measure that I can measure the true thickness of the layer on the cross section and it's 7, um, 1.7 uh, centimetres. So 1.7 centimetres is there. I'm going to put two dots so I get the same um, distance away um, and the angle right again stopped by F2 and it's going to join the other layer C that I've got um, it's the E boundary which I've got here and I finish off the fold now so while I'm at it I'm, um, because I might as well stick in the fold axis remember I've got two unequal uh, limbs of two unequal dips so it's got to be an inclined fold axis. I've got my sin form here. Keep this at the same angle, move it across and then you can mark in the anti-form axis which is there. 
Um, whilst I'm at it, I might as well put in the metamorphic oil. Um, I know it's got to have the same dip as the boundary and the same distance away because the heat managed to heat up the rock the same distance away from the boundary. So there's my oriole put in. Let's take that one off when I've done it. So we just need to do this area on the map. Um, if I look back over here, I know I've got to have an antiform in. And these two boundaries are tilted towards um, Y at 30 degrees. This one here, which sits underneath the unconformity, is dipping 70 degrees towards X. So what I've done here is extended it a little bit further north, and that's where the boundary would have um, hit the base of the unconformity. Um, I'm going to transfer that information onto my line of section, uh, and then I'm going to move, put that onto here. So I know it's going to cut that boundary is there. So let's start doing this. I'm going to start from the right and go towards the left. That boundary here, another boundary there. So this is D, this is C there, C again. And I have rock unit E there. And then let's just double check. This should be rock unit C again over here. And it is. So it's C over there. Right. So, I know C, E boundary is here, and the base of C is there, so I can actually join those two points up, because they're the same boundary, and they get stopped by um, the dike. This one is dipping 30 degrees towards F2. Stopped by F2, extend in the air and do it the other side of the dike. So I've got D, C, and I've got E here. Uh, and I know that C boundary that I've got there is dipping the opposite direction to, at 70 degrees. Because we're going across the fold axis. Again, we have a climbed fold, so I can move my ruler across and mark on the fold axis here. Put the symbol in for an antiform. So you will have the same thickness over here, and it just squeezes on to this section, so um, D would just be off the line of section. So there's one last thing I need to do, and that is mark on the displacement of the fault. C is lower on this side, higher here, so this side has moved down, this side has moved up, and we're finished.